In this video we're going to look at an NPN bipolar junction transistor. We're going to use the 2N3904 right there, wired up as an emitter follower. You can also call it a common collector. I might sometimes call it a voltage follower. I think that's more commonly used with the op amps. But in any case, I like that one because it's more descriptive of what it's doing. We're setting a voltage to the base and that voltage is going to be followed at the emitter. The uh, thing though with uh, using an NPN bipolar junction transistor, you're going to lose about 0.6 volts from the voltage at the base. So if you got 5.6 volts there, you're going to have about 5 volts right there. This 10 kilo ohm uh, resistor doesn't have to be 10 kilo ohm, and a lot of times you can get away without a resistor there. But uh, 10 kilo ohm resistor is going to help hold that voltage a lot. So a lot of times you don't even need it, but I did have one circuit where I absolutely needed it. So it's a good idea just to throw it in there. Uh, not uh, too hard to do. And uh, so in any case, we'll have that uh, voltage that we set over here, minus 0.6 volts. Why would we want to do that? Well, in this particular case, it's very easy to adjust the voltage to the full supply voltage at 10 volts down to uh, zero volts or anywhere in between. Again, we put it halfway for five volts, up a little bit more for 5.6 volts. Uh, pretty simple, straightforward. Problem is, let's say we set this to five volts and we just wire it directly to a 510 ohm resistor and LED going to ground. That's a lot less resistance. We do have the diode drop though of the LED, but less resistance going to a ground then uh, the 5,000 ohms, it has to go through through the trim pot, so it pulls the voltage down. So with the transistor, instead of going directly to the load, going to the base and emitter, it lets a very, very tiny trickle of current going through here, but for the most part, it holds the voltage you set there, and you'll get about 0.6 volts less. A very, very tiny trickle allows a lot more current to flow from collector to emitter, uh, probably hundreds of times. And uh, so, ultimately, that current flows and builds up the voltage at that point that you set, especially if you got that resistor there. And uh, then you can put that across the load right there. Uh, pretty straightforward. One thing is, don't mix up the emitter and collector. I put that warning on there because that's really easy to do first off. But uh, this circuit, it's a bad idea. A lot of circuits, uh, you'll probably not even notice you got them backwards and uh, may never cause damage or anything. But this circuit, you can see here that if I put the trim pot all the way to ground to uh, zero volts right there, same thing, the negative rail, then we have the uh, positive supply connected to that pin and the uh, negative supply connected to that pin. We have the full volt, uh, 10 volts across the collector to base, which is fine for the collector. If the emitter is up there, first off, the collector is n-type material, base is p-type material, emitter is n-type, so N, P, N. They're both N-type material. You put them backwards, the transistor really works about the same. Difference is that uh, the collector to base will drop uh, maybe 30 volts, I think. You know, block it. And uh, I don't know for sure that it's that high, but I think it is. I always check the data sheet to make sure if you think you're going to get anywhere near there. But in uh, any case, more than 10 volts. That's the main takeaway. If the emitter is up there and the emitter is more positive, than the base by I think about six volts. It starts letting current flow through freely. So that's well below 10 volts. You'll definitely have current flow. The only thing limiting the current when it's ten, uh, four volts higher than the six volt that it drops with no resistance is whatever current the power supply can provide. So it'll probably burn it out. So don't do that. Um, make sure, especially a circuit like this, the emitter is in the right spot. So now, the reason why I'm gonna use 10 volts we're going to also use a 500 ohm resistor, actually 510. So if it's a 1 kilo ohm, 1000 ohm resistor, there'll be 1 milliamp of current that flows per volt across the resistor. So 500 ohms is half of that. We'll have about 2 milliamps per volt, approximately. And uh, so the uh, LEDs, they can only handle about 20 milliamps maximum while well, they're forward bias lit up. And uh, so you got uh, 10 volts. 2 milliamps, there's no way we can exceed 20 uh, volts. Now, that won't actually be what we can get. We lose 0.6 volts from the base and also the diode drops about, uh, the LED drops about 2 volts if it's red from the resistor. Green or blue drops about 3. So if we set this 
to uh, 5 volts, the LED is going to drop about 2 volts, and then we'll have about 3 volts across the resistor, about 6 milliamps of current. Remember, about 2 milliamps per volt, approximately. So it makes the math easy, even for uh, mental math. And uh, so that's why I like this load for this particular circuit. Let's look at it on the board. So now here we got the trim pot set where I want it to begin with. Positive supply negative on the ends. And then the wipers in the middle. There's just pins on uh, this trim pot. If you haven't seen it yet, just little metal pins right there. And uh, now we set zero volts at the uh, base. And uh, it was floating. But in uh, any case, there we go. Now that little jumper goes to the base. The middle pin of the 2N3904 emitter down there. Collector up there. Flat side is to the right. So that's how you know which one's which. The collector is to the positive supply. Emitter has that 10 kilo ohm resistor. Then the 510 ohm resistor coming to the LED going to ground. I have the oscilloscope ready. The other end of the oscilloscope is these alligator clips. I clip them to the jumper so I can move the jumpers around to where I want to take uh, measurements. So now we have the power supply set to uh, 10 volts right there to the rails. And we have about 6 milliamps of current flowing through this circuit. And I limited the current of the power supply to 20 milliamps of current. So that tells me we're going to have somewhere around 3 volts across that resistor because uh, 3 volts across 500 ohms gives you about 6 milliamps. So this isn't completely accurate either. So we're just getting kind of an estimate. So you can get an estimate that way of the uh, voltage across the resistor. And of course, to get an accurate measurement, you want to use an oscilloscope, which isn't as accurate as a multimeter. But uh, there you can see it looks like it's actually about 2.5 volts across the resistor. So that's just the resistor. That's not the voltage at the uh, output right there. And uh, sorry, it went blurry. For the complete voltage at the uh, output, we'll move the trim pot to the other side of the LED. And uh, there you can see we have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. Looks like 4.5 across both of them right there. So now, we should have about 5 milliamps flowing through there, but you can also see that uh, there's that voltage across that 10 kilo ohm resistor, and uh, we got 10,000 ohms of uh, resistance from one end of the trim pot to the other. So there are some other current flows that may raise it up a little bit. And, uh, and that was right at the edge of 6 for this, and it's not completely accurate. But in any case, you can see the estimates were really close. So now what... Uh, we can do, we have uh, that voltage right there. So that's the voltage at the emitter. So if I move the jumper up one spot, we will get the voltage at the base of the transistor, which comes to this jumper, the output of the uh, trim pot right there. And you can see it went up about 0.6 volts approximately. Maybe it's 0.5 or something. These are approximate numbers. But uh, there you can see we have, looks like a little more than six volts right there, which uh, results in about uh, five and a half volts at uh, the emitter right there if I go down there so that is the main takeaway there and we already looked at the current going through the uh, resistor right there so we can do some more mental math we have a 10 volt uh, power supply we have an LED that we're gonna light so we're gonna lose about 0.6 volts from the transistor and about 2 volts from a red LED going across the resistor and so it's going to be about 7.5 volts approximately across the resistor if I turn this all the way up. And then so times 2, we can expect about 15 milliamps of current on there. So I'll zoom back and I'll turn this all the way up. And there, you can see it went off the screen for that. In fact, I can get rid of this right now. We're just going to go with the estimates, the mental math part of this. And there you can see about uh, 16 milliamps of current uh, total. So that's about 15. And again, some current's going through that resistor, some through the trim pot at all times. Actually, not right now. Now it's going uh, in that direction. But in uh, any case, if we look at the voltage across the uh, resistor, there you can see about 7 uh, volts approximately. So probably about 14 milliamps of current going through there. We could measure that to get it accurate, but uh, I'm going to end the video there. It's uh, plenty long right now. So hopefully you enjoyed all of that and uh, you enjoyed the circuit this is one of my favorite uh, transistor circuits so in any case check out one of the other videos that i'm posting click like subscribe the bell all that donate to patreon if you can that would help out the most 
I can use all the Patreon support I can get, but uh, just watching the videos is uh, great enough. So thanks for that. I'll see you in the next video.